one sat alone beside the highway begging his eyes were blind the light he could not see he clutched his old rags and shivered in the shadows then jesus came and bade his What a wonderful day that was when Jesus came. I'd like to give proper credits to the memory of Brother Hester Roboff, a man of God whom I respected very much. Back in the 60s, I sat under his ministry live in person, and along with Hyman Appleman, Dr. Fred Brown, and Dr. Charles Waggle, and Dr. The uh, president of Tennessee Temple Bible School. I sat under these, and there were precious men, and I think of their memories, and I give precious credit to the memory of Dr. Lester Roboff and to the Lester Roboff organization for using that song and that part of it. It's a very good one. Then Jesus came, and. Turn my darkness to night, turn my darkness to day, took away my night of sin. Thank God for that. I'd like to talk to you today on my testimony of my salvation in Jesus Christ, my own. Go on. My own pilgrim's progress for how I came to faith in Jesus Christ and uh, some things that happened during that time, and I, I just praise God. But let's have a moment of prayer here, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord. While I'm here in our prayer room, Lord, place where me and my wife meet morning and read the Bible and pray and honor you in worship, Lord, and place where we meet in the evening time and do the same. Thank you, Lord. We praise you and give honor to you. Help me now as I give this information to whoever would be reading it and whoever would be listening and watching it. I hope to be a help, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, when I was younger, I could just write off what I'd like to say without making notes. Now that I'm older, it's just not that easier. I need some help. So I've made some notes. So I ask you to forgive me if this bothers you. My true intentions and purpose for this is to make myself a little bit transparent to you. Not a whole lot. Without making uh, too much. And in that way use some of my experience to hope to help many of you who are struggling with coming to faith in Christ. And some people say struggling. Well, yeah, I know a lot of people say that's, that's a sick joke, but really it's not. Today with so many different ways taught and by different religions about how to come to Jesus Christ, there are times that people can be struggling with how to come to faith in Jesus Christ. But I want, want to end my discourse today with uh, telling you the one way that you can come to faith in Jesus Christ, one way you can have a sure, what I call, eternal insurance through Jesus Christ that will guarantee you a home in heaven when you die. Now pay attention. I had this written to where I was going to say certain things, but then the Holy Spirit of God got to convicting me and showed me what he wanted me to say. And where do I get that kind of conviction and assurance? At John 16, 13. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, and I'm reading scripture, I got written down so it's easy for me to handle it, it, handle it and don't have to spend time thumbing through pages because time is limited here. Uh, so, John 16, 13, KJV, 
How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, he will show you things to come. So the guiding leadership of God's Holy Spirit is helping me with this salvation testimony and of God's amazing grace in my life. I give a brief testimony of my own, kind of a pilgrim's progress, salvation experience, which I hope can and will be very viable in helping you who have found yourself struggling with the truth of coming to faith in Jesus Christ. Tuck these glasses off here. I had to get new glasses recently, and some of these glasses, they don't fit my eyes. So anyway, continuing, what I'm talking about is about me. So you can't, can't really blame me if I use myself as an example, I suppose. My name is Dr. Carl G. Strickland. I, uh, trying to use what I know to help you. I hope that's all right with you. And so I see value in what I'm trying to say to you. And I hope you'll watch and listen carefully. Right now, the God's Holy Spirit has shown me to say that I am terribly sorry for the many things that went wrong in my life over my past lifetime. I've been a grief and repentance to God for these many, many times. With me, I grew up in the country, in farming country, where most families knew each other and were just like close friends and almost like family for a lot of us. So at that very young age, I was asked to go to the altar and during what was then called a revival. And then they had what they called a revival for 14 days, two weeks. They were praying for 50 people to be saved and become members of that church. At the, at the altar, people were jumping around. Uh, yeah, in a Baptist church, they were jumping around the altar with all people praying at the one time and a lot of mass confusion going on. Some people were slapping me on the back and asking loudly, have you got it yet? Have you got it yet? Well, like, what have I got? No Bible was used to present any salvation scripture. No counseling was done. I was just supposed to pray through, and I was not sure how to pray through. So people were counted as being saved. Fifty people. I was one of them. After the circus-like atmosphere of that revival was gone, guess what? So were 49 of those 50 people. And I was still there because my mom and dad, my mother and dad were there. They were devout Christians, beautiful people. And they took us children to church and they taught us in the ways of God. And I'm thankful for that. But somehow something got missed there. And I, I've got that in the later part of this discourse and I'll, I'll explain that to you. So, through it all, for me, living a religious life was easier while with people who were saved and who were religious. But while I was in school and other places away from the church and away from that influence, it was a whole different atmosphere. It was a whole lot harder to live. And in these days now, in my older years, you know, looking back, looking backward, you know, you say hindsight's much better than foresight, and a lot of times it is. And I realized that at that time, I was not saved. If I had died, I'd have gone to hell. And that's a sad thought. I was not saved. I had empty religion, but I did not have the filled lamp of oil of the Holy Spirit and of Christ Jesus. There was no salvation there. For this, I can use Christ's teachings on the ten virgins, the foolish, five foolish, 
five wise. That would be found in Matthew 25, verses 9 and 10, KJV. But let's just drop that right there, okay? As life went on, I started searching. And I was told, well, you sound, you sound a confession of faith, so you're saved. My later years, I went into Bible college and I won't mention the president's name he is a revered man a very good man godly man he's dead long years ago now but I got to talk with him one day and I said I think I'm lost and I need to be saved and what he said to me he said you signed a confession of faith to get in this college didn't you I said, yes, I did. He said, then you're saved because you signed that confession of faith. You just got to believe it. Well, that was no help. That was no help, sir. One sat alone. This Moving over and over, over the years, into the later 1980s. Outdoors in a hot sun, I passed out. I think it was a stroke. Some people found me and got me to a hospital and a doctor's, doctor's chart showed my blood pressure would hit 280 over 210. The big question by the time I was taken to the hospital is was it a stroke or was it a heart attack? I lost part of my memory and had to depend on parents and sisters and others to fill in the blanks of memory. Now, to me, this fits the pattern of a stroke. The end result was that I ended up in a veteran's hospital home for 18 months for medical care that helped very much to get me well from this. But you know, God took care of this. God took care of me. God had his own way of working. Now, a lot of people say this won't happen. I'm Baptist, and in Baptist church. And I haven't given my personal testimony like this in a Baptist church because uh, they just don't think this is right. Just before I was taken to the Federal Veterans Hospital, God did a marvelous work of saving grace, salvation, in my life. I heard a pastor's mercy this morning, that morning. Oh yes, I was teaching a Sunday school class, auditorium adult Sunday school class of about 150 people. And just give me a moment here. pastor's message that morning was on hell and heaven he preached hell hot one way in no way out and very very real something about that message stuck with me that afternoon about 29 years ago if God was zeroing in on me and pinning me down and saying to me it's time for you to get your life straightened out God did this in his own way of speaking to me. And how did he speak to me? Well, simply through the word of God. And he did it. Yes, God calls nearly every scripture verse on hell and heaven and salvation that I had studied and learned from the Bible to come just rushing and pounding right into me through my mind with forcefulness, through my soul, with forcefulness. God made me hear those. God made me remember those. And God in his own way of a kind put me into a coma kind of trance and showed me the fire of hell and caused me to feel the heat also. God showed me this was my last chance to be saved. 
If I said no, he reserved the right to take my life from me and drop me into hell. I was scared out of my skin. God woke me up. I cried for mercy and repented of my sin. I could ever, of any sin and every sin I could ever think of to repent from. And here God showed me that he'd saved my soul. No more fears of going to hell. No more uncertainty. No more asking, will you help me? I think I'm lost and need to be saved. God took care of this right here. God showed me to go preach his word to you. people. He showed me it would not be easy for several reasons now, but I must try to do it. He was holding me responsible to do this or what I could still do. Telling this, I'm being transparent with you, letting you into my inner heart, testimony of my salvation. If anyone thinks there is a need for me to apologize to you, please accept my apology. I want things from this time, from the time I was saved, and this time forward of the salvation experience to be pleasing to God and helpful to people. I just now talked about this part of my salvation experience because I have tested the water, so to speak, and a few people think I am dreaming a bad dream for thinking this way and telling my experience this way. And there is something wrong with me thinking this is how it happened. Well, this is how it happened. There is a song that expresses my happiness in Jesus Christ and how I have everything I need to make me happy. I knew this song come through my mind once in a while with some of the words, but I didn't know all the song. I searched the Gospel of Music Internet on my computer and found a song entitled Everything I Need to Make Me Happy. It's sung by on video by Jeff and Sherry Easter and others. Now, in Jesus Christ, I found a jewel very rich and rare, and I want to focus on Jesus Christ and what he chose me to do and get his work done in me. I want to be an instrument through which Christ works to get his work done here on earth so that when I meet him at his beam of judgment seat, I can hear him say to me, well done, good and faithful servant. Now some questions. Do you ask such a question as this? Can this really happen that someone tries to tell you how to be saved and you think you are saved but still lost and only religious? Yes, dear one, it can happen and I'll give you scripture to show you why I think that way. The devil does not want anyone to be saved and he will use people to tell you lies and make you think the lies are true so you will just go on in religion, but never have salvation in Christ. He is right there with the soul winner at the altar or in the home or elsewhere. All he needs to do is to cause a distraction, a diversion, so that the sinner person does not understand what he or she needs to understand about being saved by faith in Christ through the grace of Christ. Then the next step is that the devil steals the seed of the word of God out of the sinner's heart and leaves the sinner just a religious person, but not a saved person in Jesus Christ. I knew what I told you, I was going to give you scripture on this. Well, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 19 KJV and Luke chapter 8 verse 13. And I read to you. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then comes the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. In Luke 8, 13, KJV. They on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word with joy. These have no root which for a while believe and in time of temptation fall away. Here again, the person did not get 
the right information. Just like in my younger years, I didn't get the right information either. And I didn't get the right information while the person thought about it. Satan stole the seed of the Word of God away so that that person would not get saved in Jesus Christ. Now, if this is you, please find someone with a King James Version of the Bible who knows how to patiently and carefully pray with you and lead you into salvation of Jesus Christ. Only in and through Jesus Christ will you, me, anyone ever get saved and go to heaven. There is no other way. If you want to be saved and someone tells you to do some good works, which outweigh your bad works, don't listen to them. Find someone with a King James Version Bible who knows what to tell you and ask that person to show you how to be saved. Make sure you get the right information and the faith. Believe what Jesus Christ can do for you. Notice here, some teach, sign a card, join the church, and you'll be saved. Some teach, do good works, and if your good works that way, your bad works, you'll get into heaven. Some teach, only live a good moral life above wrongdoing, and God will have to look at you and smile when you let you into heaven. None of these work, dear one. So don't count on any of them. None of them work. None of them are any good. The Bible says we all have sinned. Romans 3.23 We all have sinned. And in Romans 6.23 The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And then John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he stretched out his arms on that cross, and he died for you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, there is none other name given among heaven among men, whereby we must be saved. And that's a very important thing don't don't forget that in romans 10 9 and 10 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus shall believe in thine heart that god has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved and i'd like to give you some other scripture here in the book of john chapter 10 jesus is talking about the sheep and the pastor, and he is saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way. That someone, that same is a thief and a robber. But he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep a name and leads them out. And let's go to verse 7 there. Jesus is saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. So dear one, through Jesus Christ is your only way to get into heaven. There's no other way. You may hear of ways taught like these three ways I've told you here. And the third way, the moral, that's taught in modern philosophy today. And that won't work either. The only way that works is through Jesus Christ. So we need to remember that and don't try some other way. Find someone who's uh, born again, who is saved, who's living right for God, who can take the scriptures and help you to find Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now 
as the music plays, I want to pray and end this program with the music. Father, we pray for you to help us, Lord. I tried, Lord, and Peggy's stumbled through this. His eyes were blind. The light Lord, I'm trying. I pray that you'll use what I have given to help the multitude of people find the amazing grace in their life also through Jesus Christ so they can find everything in Jesus Christ they need to make them happy and let Jesus Christ show them the way in Jesus name Amen All the tears are dried away For he takes the glue